my interest in uh, all things Catholic. Uh, um, those elements have showed up in my other films, Mean Streets, Taxi Driver to a certain extent, uh, Raging Bull certainly, and many pictures. Um, but I think I approached it uh, from different ways. Uh, uh, the idea of um, um, the tenets or the uh, beliefs of Christianity uh, in the everyday life that we lead. You know. And so ultimately, I was given the Book of Silence in 1988. It was in August, I believe, or September, uh, by Archbishop Paul Moore, who is the uh, Archbishop of, um, uh, Episcopal Archbishop of New York, St. John the Divine. He was a supporter of the film I had just made, Last Temptation of Christ, uh, after seeing the film. And so uh, he talked to us about um, a serious discussion about uh, those, those elements in that particular film and those, those arguments, those, those uh, 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 concepts, uh, those questions. And then he said, um, I have a book for you that you should take a look at. Um, uh, it takes the very essence of uh, what you were trying for in, in your, other, your other films and goes, goes deeper. The issue in this particular story and that should apply to everything we know of today, too. And that is the cultural differences, right? Uh, how, how do you deal? How do they deal with the uh, cultural differences of uh, Japan as opposed to Western Europe in the 17th century? Um, uh, they have to understand the culture that they're bringing this gospel, this good news to. They have to understand what the values of the culture are. They have to understand the way people think. The only way to do that is to be with them know the language, spend time, and then see, then see. And I think the only way they really, uh, it really could work is if their actions are something which uh, um, uh, the people would want to emulate, how they behave. I think that's the key. And it, 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 isn't, it doesn't have to do with stepping on our fumier, or it, it's how they relate to the people around them and the love and the compassion they bring. That's the key. It took so many years to get the silence made uh, for so many reasons. And at, during that time, we looked at different areas of the world. And we started with the real places in Japan where Shushiko Endo's novel took place in Nagasaki, uh, a small village called Satomi, which in the movie is Tomoji, Unzen Hot Springs, uh, so many others, but we didn't film there because it, 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 it would be too expensive. So in addition to Japan, the production designer Dante Ferretti went to New Zealand, scouted it, Vancouver, Northern California, and finally Taiwan. Um, we even, I even realized we went some places in the in American the American South. But he realized right away that this this is where we could make the picture. The, the landscape was very, very similar. It had so much to offer Taiwan. Uh, the coastlines were untouched. Uh, the land itself, the landscapes were quite extraordinary. And, and we had a crew of over 750 people. And it was made up of Taiwanese, Japanese, Australians, Italians, British, and Americans. Um, and uh, yes, it was complex and uh, confusing for a little while at first. <laughs> there were language barriers, a lot of cultural differences. However, you know, everyone really wanted to make this picture and they adapted so quickly and, and we became um, uh, blended and like a determined family, really. As a, we're all, they were all devoted to helping me and, 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 you know, really bring this picture to life on every level. Liam Neeson and I worked together before on Gangs of New York. Uh, Karen Hines, I've, I've always admired. He's, he's an extraordinary actor, a great, great actor, really. So much so, I don't even know he's in which... I, I've seen him in movies, and I say, who's that guy? And it's always the same guy. It's Karen Hines. Hines. So <laughs> I never recognize... He, he's so extremely uh, immersed in the character he plays, you know? Um, and uh, I, I find him to be amazing. Andrew and Adam were new to me. I, I mean, I'd seen Andrew in Social Network and the Red Riding film, and Boy A, I think, and Adam in the Noah Baumbach movie, and um, 
well, and girls, and 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 I really loved him, and I loved his work, uh, and they took the work very seriously, uh, threw themselves into the roles they say actually, actually, uh, really involved certain hardships. Uh, one of which, besides going to uh, uh, travel in Portugal and uh, going on retreat in Wales, uh, religious retreat and all this sort of thing. Uh, but when it got to do the picture, they really had to be extremely thin and they had to eat very, very little during the shooting. And we had a nutritionist with us, but, but it was, it was a, uh, uh, physical hardship. And, and Andrew actually, um, went through the, um, and completed the spiritual exercises with the Jesuits, uh, this, uh, Father James Martin, uh, who helped him through that, which is an extraordinary achievement. Rodriguez is uh, somebody who, uh, in a sense, gives up his faith to gain his faith, and that's the paradox. And when we were getting ready to make the picture, I realized that I was trying to create something that had been with me for many years since I was a teenager and when I first wanted to make movies. So I'd, as I said earlier, I'd studied for the priesthood, uh, didn't make it, uh, realized early on that it wasn't my calling. It's certainly a vocation, but it wasn't mine. Um, it was the calling of someone I had admired, a priest, a neighborhood priest who taught, taught us a lot. I wanted to be like him, but that's not the reason to be a priest. And I had this other calling, I guess, and it was making movies. And I had an idea to make a picture about a priest, actually, many years ago. Uh, a priest who had the calling, but who needed to take that extra step of getting past his ego and his spiritual pride, because it's the parishioners that have to come first, always. And I realized that this was the picture I was making, in a sense, while I was, while I was making it, really, while I was shooting it. Uh, I mean, I touched on this before, Mean Streets and certain other pictures, but, you know, here I was um, well, 60 years later dealing with the theme that has been with me since I was so young. So Rodriguez and, and to a certain extent Garupe have to get through themselves. They have to get past themselves and their pride. They have to give it up. They have to give up their egos. They have to be selfless. They have to lose the self, right? Both of them have the illusion that they'll be able to to find their own spiritual paths, but of course, um, it's never the case. This is the second time I worked with, or third time I worked with Rodrigo Prieto, uh, and <laughs> he was another. Uh, he was another person in the sense that once we got the camera in that position, we felt that uh, the image was telling us more than what we thought. And he would go with that. Um, the key thing, his lighting is is uh, is uh, subtle and uh, uh, sensitive. His tone on set is something which is um, supportive um, with humor, but at the same time, uh, not necessarily phased by all the crises. Um, and so uh, the temperament is good, but but uh, the ability to try different things, the ability to to say, well, can't we have the camera fly over there, like a Wolf of Wall Street and fly? And he'd work it out, you know. Um, I, I'm very lucky, I think, to have a good relationship with him, and he's a wonderful artist, great artist. <laughs>